A space for the Inbound produced by Mojik and Studios suddenly appeared on my Twitter timeline and I immediately wanted to understand what it was about. But at first glance starts out as a touching title that smells like the 90s, evolves into a story with dark contours mixed with supernatural powers, which addresses the lives of two teenagers with a strong connection in a city located in Indonesia. Set on a screen of pixels surrounded by a touching soundtrack and small notes in cutscenes with anime contours, it tells the story of a boy named Atma, who like most teenagers, although without major concerns about the subject, is trying to figure out what he wants to do with his future after finishing the high school. Raya, his girlfriend, on the other hand, is quite methodical and decides to make a bucket list of activities to do with them. On that list are activities like going to the movies, having a party and inviting all of their friends, among others. Suddenly, Atma finds himself wrapped in a mist that mixes his dream with reality and discovers that he has a mysterious supernatural power. With the help of a red book, he manages to delve into the minds of people disturbed by traumas in order to help them overcome that less positive moment. This space type ability will be one of the most defining mechanics throughout this title. Raya also has powers, albeit quite different. Raya can change reality, transport herself to other places or, for example, levitate objects and even people. All of this sounds very interesting until it gets to the point where the powers used by Raya begin to affect not only her, but the entire city. The inhabitants begin to behave strangely, certain locations seem to have some kind of glitch alternating between parallel realities, and even a rift begins to open in the sky of this peculiar location. Is this real life or just a dream? Atma will be the crucial point in answering all these questions, while trying to keep everything around from collapsing. While the story becomes interesting as time goes by, its gameplay begins to gain somewhat repetitive contours between activities. In the end, the gameplay involves a lot of exploration, going to elements of visual novel and small moments where it is necessary to click on the right keys at the right times. The main problem here is the fact that there are quite a few moments of exploration separated between running from one side to the city to the other one, where the main objective is the search for the necessary elements to overcome the present problem. While on paper this is an interesting idea, it is rather tedious to go from one screen to another as an errand boy. There are positive moments during this rush, characters to meet, cats to pet and name, bottle caps to collect, among others. But the feeling of boredom is still very present, especially in Chapter 3, which is by far the slowest in its development. It never becomes a difficult game, there is no learning path or anything like that, except for small sections that can become somewhat frustrating, largely because of the collision area that the character presents in moments of finger dexterity, such as when there are objects falling from the sky. The controls are super responsive, even when it takes a double click to get Atma to start its fastest march. Being a linear story, it is unlikely that you will skim this adventure a second time. It's also possible to miss some secondary objectives. So in this line, as I previously mentioned, there is a list of activities with some secondary activities. That said, and for the hardcore players, there are also secrets and achievements that are harder to unlock. A Space for the Unbound presents a very interesting theme drama story that somehow managed to warm even the coldest of hearts. The attention to the detail of culture pop, the construction of an interesting city with engaging characters make this title a winning bet for the kickoff in this year's indie games calendar.